SwiftUI gives us a wide range of modifiers built right in. Things like padding, font, background, clip shape, and more. However, it's possible to create completely custom view modifiers too. To do that, make a new struct that conforms to the view modifier protocol. This thing has only one requirement. Make a method called body that accepts whatever content is being given to work with and returns some view, your modified view from there. For example, we could say that uh, all titles in our program should have a particular style. So what we want to do to do that is to say, first, let's make a view modifier to make exactly that style we want. So I'll say there's a struct called title, which is a view modifier. This thing has to have that body method I mentioned. So we'll do func body. There we go, use co-completion. It takes some kind of content to work with and returns a modified view. We'll then send back whatever they gave to us with some modifiers attached. Firstly, we'll say it's got a large title. Then we'll say it's got a foreground color of white. Then apply some padding. Then do a background of blue. Then a clip shape of rounded rectangle with radius of 10. A bunch of modifiers like that. We can now use that with the modifier modifier. Yeah, it's a modifier called modifier, right? But it means we can apply any sort of modifier. For example, we can say there's text hello world down here with dot modifier of title. And there you go. It's applied our title modifier to our text. So it reads a text that becomes content, applies large title, white padding, blue, and clip shape to produce the finished output. Now, when working with custom modifiers, it's usually a smart idea to add an extension on the view protocol too. So just so easier to work with. For example, we could wrap our title modifier inside an extension. We could say extension view has a func title style, returns some view, and that's where we apply the modifier of title. And now when it comes to using our title style, we just say text hello world dot title style. And that means call the method, which in turn calls the modifier. Now, custom modifiers can do much more than just apply existing other modifiers. They can also return wholly new view structure. It's down to you what this thing does. Remember, modifiers return new objects with some view attached. And these are new, not just modifying what you have so far, you can create one view that embeds in a stack, for example, and does other stuff too. For example, I could say there is a uh, watermark view modifier. Give this a text string to work with. And then for its uh, body method, we're gonna say there's a Z stack with an alignment of bottom trailing with our content inside and overlay on that the text of their watermark text with a font of caption and a foreground color of white and a padding of five and a background of black. Then again, add an extension to view so it's easier to use. Extension view, func watermarked with text string, returns some view, and then call modifier watermark text of text. And with that in place, we can now add a watermark to any view. We can say things like uh, in our body down here, uh, I want the color dot blue with a frame of width 300, height 200, watermarked with the text hacking with Swift. And when that plays back, you'll see the color blue with our text over it, boom, hacking with Swift in the bottom trailing corner automatically. So they're really powerful things. Now often folks wonder when is it better to make a full on custom view modifier or can they just have a view extension like this? When can this extend view directly? When they gotta do both? And really it comes down to one main reason. When you have custom view modifiers, you can add custom properties. 
their own stored properties like a text here and other more advanced functionality. Whereas extensions to view don't have that. They have to work only with uh, smaller things like methods and computed properties. And dogs who are sniffing around and getting lots of treats. So hungry. Yeah, they do get fed. They get fed a lot, you know, believe it or not. By the end of this video series, you'll start to know which dog is which, by the way. And this, is, <laughs> this one is Aria. She's a bit bigger and a bit whiter than Luna, aren't you? And a bit hungrier. <laughs>